Now then, you are very welcome along. It is the latest in our series of GAA roadshows in association with Super Value. We are calling on GAA fans across the country to support where you're from. You can check out OTB social channels, get involved, win some great prizes, and you can check out facebook.com forward slash Super Value Ireland for more information. We've got a brilliant lineup for you this evening. It's a real Kerry Cork theme for obvious reasons. They're playing this Sunday. To kick things off, my co-host for the evening, I am honoured, Kieran Donaghy, hello. Oh, how are you? How are you keeping? I'm very well. Like I said, we have a great lineup this evening. Lots of memories. We're going to get stuck into all that. First, though, give us some thoughts on Kerry Cork this weekend. What way is this going to go? I'm looking forward to Joe. We're covering it for off the ball. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be tight. That's my honest opinion. I think it's. I think Cork will be. Both teams haven't that much football played, so it's not like you know there's a level of fluidity or understanding between forward units or whatever. So everyone's that bit rustier. And if you go back and look at a historic um, rivalry that's always been tight and you've had the odd blowouts, obviously, uh, both ways. Um, but if you look back over a rivalry like Kevin and, and Monaghan um, that was on the weekend, uh, a historic rivalry, two neighbouring counties and very little between them on, on many occasions. No matter how well somebody's going, whether a crowd are in Division 1 and they're flying and the other crowd are Division 3 and they're struggling, you put, a cha you put jerseys on them men and they're representing their county and they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with their local rivals, it's going to get interesting and mm. it's going to be, you know, it's going to be dogged. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be brilliant. It's knockout championship football. That brings a whole new set of, of pressures. There hasn't been a knockout game in Parky Cueve in, in 20 years uh, between Kerry and Cork. So, uh, you know, there's nobody in that group has experienced that type of pressure. And believe you me, Joe, if this thing is tight with 10 minutes to go, that's when you're going to see this pressure show on 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 one group or the other group, um, and it's 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 really exciting for me because I, I I honestly think it's it's going to be a good game. Three points separated the teams last year. Uh, Kerry led in three goals. You know they'll they'll be working on that, and Cork will be looking at the one nineteen they conceded and trying to figure out how they tighten that up as well. So you know if both teams get it right in the day, uh, with the backroom team with Dr. Keen O'Neill being blowing Cork and the physical shape that he would have added to this Cork team in the last nine or ten months um you know it's, it's it's going to be a good one okay well we're looking forward to that in the meantime we have two brilliant guests to bring you so kieran and i have sharpened our questions we're going to bring them in now uh two brilliant gea men we have owned bomber liston no introduction required seven all irelands nine munster medals four all stars and we have with us as well uh the most legendary doctor maybe in irish sports dr con murphy and ever present with the core curlers and footballers since 1976. 1976, Dr. Khan has been with the Cork footballers and hurlers. Nicky English, a friend of his, described him as the greatest example of GA volunteerism I've ever known. So you're both very welcome. Bomber, how you doing? Thank you. All good. All good, Joe. Bomber, four, four All-Stars. That's a disgrace. You should deserve at least seven or eight, no? Well, I was wronged out of a good few of them, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, geez, no, I, I'm quite happy with my haul. So, um, <laughs> geez, no. <laughs> geez, no, they're, 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 they'll have to come by. So I'm very happy with my lot. Good. And where do you keep it? Did yeah. you get, did you get, you got a plaque back in the day for an all-star, did you? No. Um, that was back. You, I'm I'm way younger than that. That was way back in the <laughs> 60s. In the 60s, you used to get plaques, but we got oh, lovely, yeah. lovely molded uh, uh, bronze and uh, silver, platinum, real expensive, lovely. Uh, um, uh, there was two fellas jumping for a ball, kind of, you know. Oh, Do you lovely. remember those ones, no? <laughs> but anyway, they're lovely. Yep. <laughs> I take them out every night and have a look at them before I go to sleep. <laughs> bomber, if you if you weren't getting them, bomber, who was getting them? You had you had tasty competition for the number fourteen. I would say on the yes, on those all star teams, you'd yeah, Matt Connor Josh. in a way and Jimmy Keaveney. You had Sean Lowry, Frank McGuigan. Just Frank mm. McGuigan kick was it fifteen points or something from playing in an Ulster one day. final. In an Ulster final, yeah, he was a great great footballer. I remember seeing him over in in New York. I marked him. I went over there in 77 as a young fella and Jesus, he's, we were out and anyway, this fella's boot hit my ear. I was up off the ground trying to catch a ball and Jesus, his boot, he was up another four or five feet above me. But a superb player, um, Sean, Sean Lowry, 
great, great servant again. Played everywhere up the middle, I think, for Offaly. Fantastic footballer. So, um, Jimmy Keevney, you know, everyone knows how good Jimmy was, like, you know. Then mm-hmm. you had Declan Barron. You had, geez, there was Jimmy Barry Murphy, uh, Dini Allen at times, played inside full. Uh, some great, some great players, so... Call them all you, you couldn't you couldn't let any of the cock lads, so you were baiting them so much in Munster they couldn't get an all star. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jeez, no, the, the, not the way it went to the uh, um, We had our good days, but we had we had our bad days as well. Um, my last my last few years, um, 88, 89, 90, and 90. Was it 88, 89, 90? Yeah. They, they, they hurt a lot those years, you know, and uh, 93. The Niall Cahillan putting the last nail into my boots, you know, <laughs> and uh, you know when you get that curly finger to come off, <laughs> not down in down in Park uh, So we've good memories and bad memories of the the Cork derbies, you know. Dr. Khan, it's great to have you with us. I was reading that you was it re- last December, Dr. Khan, you you retired the day job on Mardike Street. You called it a day. You hit seventy. This is probably not your, the the first year of retirement you were expecting. <laughs> uh, it's funny all year, especially with COVID. So I handed over my practice to my son Colum, who's the, who's actually the doctor with the ordering team now. So good tradition. How have you, you mentioned? You, men- Sorry, you mentioned there that I started with Cork in 1976, but I'd like to point out I was the mascot in '56. <laughs> 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 and uh, some of my more cynical friends reckon I'm back where I started. Stuff. <laughs> 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 uh, so I, I, I grew up. My dad played in 12 Munster finals. He spent his time giving out about Kerry and what or a crowd of. You know what they were. Uh, and I'd answer the door, and there would be Jim Brosnan or Podley Sheehy or Ty Line from Kerry coming in for his tea. So <laughs> that was a funny upbringing. It was because your mother you took after, so can was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was all. Can you, 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 did a, you did a stint with the, with the Kerry seniors as well? Are you covered uh, it for games? Uh, I did. It was, it was interesting. In 1976, uh, I wasn't long qualified. It's been a year in the, the hospital in Tralee, St. Catherine's. Uh, and through the year I started with Cork, which was by accident, really. Uh, I mean, you must remember that time there was no team doctors as such. Uh, there was no orthopedic surgeon in Kerry, believe it or not. There was only one who came down from Cork every few weeks. So sports injuries was unheard of. But so from my college days and from being out around the town, actually, I got to know the Kerry lads. They started coming into the hospital to me. Not that I was the new sentry of Trilly, <laughs> but that... Uh, I'd say I you were the, an upgrade, though. <laughs> I, I was away to the x-ray machine for them. <laughs> they, could by, they could bypass everyone by coming to me. <laughs> uh, so uh, so Cork won the 76 hurling final. Nicholas says to me, gee, you're looking after all the fellas in there. You might as well come with us. So in the 76th final, I strapped up the two cornerbacks and Paulie Manny. Paulie Manny collapsed after 20 minutes. <laughs> I said to Paulie at halftime, geez, what happened to you? He said, some fella threw something at me from the hill. In fact, he ruptured his jacket, exactly his tendon. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's a sore one. Everybody yeah. thinks that that's a... I've been around fellas and they've turned around and said, who kicked me? That's a yeah. desperate injury. To give you how di- uh, different sports injuries were dealt with that time. Ger Power, a week before the All-Ireland final in 1980 against Roscommon, tore his hamstring badly. And he rang me. And on the Monday he came up and he saw a lady in CUH hospital in Cork. Francis Walsh, who was highly regarded. And he attended her every twice a day for the week he stayed with my mother and on the friday myself and joe went out to the Mardike to do a fitness test what well, was hard to believe was no one from kerry came out with us it was just the two of us now tom spillan was there as well because he was on the minor team and i was checking on his ankle but power took a run and i said to him you're you're in trouble there you won't make it he said, I have to make it. I'm captain. This is a chance in a lifetime. Unless I 
unless I play, I don't take the cup. He said, you have to get me out on the pitch. And I said, it's not looking good. He said, what about an injection? I said, they don't work that well for hamstrings. Look, try it. So again, an injection. He took one run. He said, that's magic. And uh, he got aware. I met him in the dressing room before the game. He says, what do you think? I says, it's not a chance he last. So he said, we'll start them anyway. He lasts about 20 minutes. And he came off at halftime. I said to Michael, because they give him another an injection. I said, that won't work. So uh, I said, he's gone. But to give you an idea how times have changed, I was inside the Jacks. And just before half time in that game, Mikey Sheehy scored a goal. And he came into the Jacks. And I said, great goal there, Mikey. And he says, what goal? <laughs> I said, uh, that goal you got there before half time. Blank look in his face. So he went out to Mick and says, come here, Mick, you're not a problem. No, he said, no, he don't remember scoring the goal. Ah, he says, tell him we'll show him tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Off you went. <laughs> play it, play Con away. Con concussions, concussions and ruptured, yeah. ruptured hamstrings weren't a big deal back in the day. <laughs> no. Oh. I mean, today now all those guys are up in the clinic and MRIs and what have you. The following year then, Mikey came up to me on the Friday evening, two days before the 81 final, with Joe Kahan. He couldn't kick the ball. He said his foot was killing him. So we went out to the dike, and the only ball we could get was a rugby ball, believe it or not. And I injected his foot. He practised on it, and he said, that'll do. I went up to the end of the match, injected him. And the following week, Austin Sachs played in the fine, county final he said, if we win this, he said, I'll be Captain Eckery. So I went down again and ejected him. And on the Monday, he rang me. He says, I can't walk. He got an extra hit, broken bone in his foot. Now, today's player would have an MRI and be in a cast that night. And fellas did different things that time. It was way different. What was the we injection, Con? What were you throwing into? What were you putting into the boys then? Local, lo local okay. anaesthetic. It is what you'd get if you went to the dentist. You know, it yeah. just deadened the area yeah. around it. Well, there, there was there was less sophistication. There were no clinics, you know, there were no specialists around. Uh, I was just a friend of the lads, really, you know. That's the only reason I did. I mean, the funny thing is, I always made my own way to the match. I got my own ticket. I used to get a ticket for the side, for this whatever side the Kerry dressing room was on. Uh, no one made a fuss about it. No one knew about it. <laughs> there was no Twitter or anything like that. So, um, times were tough. They just made a lot. Of, made a lot of Bomber, good I know he's the it. soundest it's... cock man. I know he's the soundest right. cock man to ever walk the planet, Bomber. But were you okay with a cock fella walking around the Kerry dressing room on All Ireland final day and semi final, etc.? I'll tell you, I wasn't. At the start, um, I, I remember going to Miko at one stage saying, Jeez, will you get rid of that cock fella? Especially <laughs> before the Munster final. I said, Jesus, he'll know all our injuries and he'll be telling the cock lads and they'll know exactly where to focus. <laughs> and he said, Are you off your game? I said, Where would you have that? He said, No, no, the lads want it, the lads want it. I was raging with the lads and I said it to a few of them and he said, I know, kind of sound, kind of sound. This was before I got to know him. And um, so, Eventually, anyway, we went out. We won the All Ireland that year, and we went on a trip. And I was introduced to him over in San Francisco, and uh, Ogie and myself bumped into him down Fisherman's Wharf. Do you remember that can? About sixty-five I years do. ago, I'd say. Um, and party we down anyway. Huh? And party. Party was good at the time. Yeah, that's right. God rest him. So next thing, anyway, we say we said we go for a cup of coffee, and led led to a few pints. And outside the window, there was this entertainer with a dog. And this dog, a terrier, that what he couldn't do wasn't <laughs> worth doing anyway. He could jump through hoops. He could somersault clockwise. He could stand in one leg, stand in his nose, nearly anything he could do. And after a big show anyway, Khan shouts out, is that all he can do? <laughs> and the whole place erupted. <laughs> but that was my first time meeting Khan. And... Uh, got to know each other it was a kind of a long session and um i must say i apologized to him after anyways for because i told him what i'd said to me to get rid of him 
But um, <laughs> I didn't I didn't have a, the same influence that time. I was only new after coming on the job. <laughs> but um, we we ended up to the best thing ever. Anyway, we're friends for for, for the last forty years because of it. And um, he's been very good to me in fairness. And I had a tr- trouble one time there with prostate cancer, and to see diagnosed it and and sorted me out and. I'm forever grateful to him and made a great friend anyway, thanks. Can I just wanted to put that on record. <laughs> thanks, Pam. On that trip, Paddy had Mara on our honeymoon. They were on their honeymoon. But Paddy brought us oh, three or four nights to different Irish pubs in San Francisco. And there was a fellow called Tommy Burke playing the squeeze box. God, it nearly wrecked our heads. Do you remember that, Bam? I do. And I, 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 I said to Polly, what are we following this fellow around San Francisco for? And Polly said to me, he'll come home and stay with me for a week and he'll fill the pub by. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Con, Con, just going back to the point there that Bomber makes, you know, about how grateful he is to you. I was doing a bit of research in advance of this chat and just found player after player after player talking about all the bits and bobs you did for them. You know, Tomas O'Shea, he said, I could go to that man with any problem and he'll reassure me things will be okay. It's a rare gift. I'd say I could nearly murder someone and Con would still make me feel he had my back. I had uh, Joe Dean, when he had testicular cancer, he called into your house. He said you were in tears, he was in tears and you were a huge support to him. And then Donald Lenehan, who I know you're good friends with through the rugby, uh, he was saying a while back, we'd meet about once a month for lunch and not a lunch goes by where his phone doesn't go off and a fella from Kerry or Galway or wherever is looking for something or some advice or an illness and has wants a second opinion. I reckon Con gets invited to around 15 weddings a year. And on <laughs> it goes, on it goes. So it seems like you see people when they're at their most vulnerable and lots of players turn to you. Uh, can you, you give us a sense of that or your experiences over the years of that? Well, uh, I've got to know a lot of sports people over the years. So I've been involved with the Cork hurling and football team since 76. But my local pub was the Western Star, where all the rugby fellas used to go. So that's where I got friendly with Donald Lennon and fellas like that. Um, you know, it t- wasn't all very scientific. I was just the guy that they all got to know, mm. really. And it was a great honour to look after all of them over the years. I enjoyed it. The point they make is that you ha- are a brilliant people person. I mean, the one side of it is the medicine, but you also almost treat the patient as well, who comes to you probably feeling very worried. Does that come naturally to you, or is that something you work on? I say I inherited that from my father. He, he had similar personality. Yeah. But I wouldn't be conscious of it myself. Right. <laughs> And what's I'm, the, what's I'm honoured that you say that. Well, it seems I'm just. Uh, it seems to be all the other people saying it about you. What What do you try and do when someone comes to you and they're worried? Is it just a case of listening, or do you try and reassure them, or they they tend to be in shock half the time? Uh, I'm a good listener and I'm a good guy to get a fellow sorted out. I have good contacts. I'd say that. that's one of the main things. <laughs> okay. I, I have a good I have a good mobile phone and. <laughs> okay. So good that's battery. One of the, one, <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the main things I'd say. I heard a few of them say that. Go to Dr. Khan and he'll point you in the right direction. He'll get something sorted for you quickly. But I, I'll tell you, yeah. you, were, you were saying about he's so. good for bits and bobs. He got he got no bobs from it from any Dick Harry led anyway. I tell you, he wouldn't take a penny. And just God only knows how much he's owed. So Khan, whenever you send that invoice anyway, it is nearly about <laughs> time to start writing those invoices now. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, no, there'll, be there'll, be fear, there'll be a fair few <laughs> come okay. to the door to get some land if his invoice landed in the door for all the service he did. <laughs> Bomber, I'll bring you in on this as well, and even Kieran, I'm sure you have your own thoughts. So you mentioned there you got to see Mikko in a dressing room, and I make it you've seen nine All Ireland Cork winning managers in action, be it football or hurling, down the years. Con, uh, what makes yeah. a great a great manager or what was it about these people who could inspire groups to lead I'm, I'm sure they did it in different ways but were there certain commonalities well you, you, I've seen Mikko in action like his team talk was leave the ball into the bomber <laughs> <laughs> you know um, I give Billy Morgan as a classic example of, of a manager who, who got the best out of fellas because he was very passionate and very emotional 
Uh, for the last 10 years, he's been trained the UCC Sigerson team, which is half Cork, half Kerry. And the respect he has from the Kerry fellas, you wouldn't believe it, you know. He's very passionate and very emotional. It brings out the best in fellas. They die for him. That, that's, that's the Thank secret. You. He's straight with guys as well. Do you agree with that, Owen? I absolutely um I, I remember Billy coming into our bar um, when I was about six or seven years old. The Nemo team used to come down to Belly Bunyan that time in their holidays. Frank Hogan and himself and all the lads and I have good memories of, of all the sing songs and, and all that. And I never threw him out or anything. <laughs> but um, a few years later, <laughs> we, we had a bit of a run in there at some match. And, uh, but I must say, uh, known Billy now, uh, Billy wears his heart on his sleeve. And I must say, I have fantastic respect for him. Um, fabulous, fabulous passion for the game. And he, he just wants to win. And um, he's a lot of friends in Kerry. And... Once he put it in the book, anyway, that my collision with him was an accident. That started everything, anyway, you know? <laughs> what collision? <laughs> yeah. What collision is right? Go on, tell us what collision. <laughs> Can't can tell that it's, one. Uh, well, there was, we'll say there was a 50 50 ball. One was bigger than Billy. Uh, Billy woke up, he woke up 20 minutes. Later, I says, "Do you remember the game?" And he says, "No." I says, "You're lucky." He says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bomber, but, Bomber used to always tell me, kind of, there was no such thing as a fifty-fifty ball when it came in between him and someone else. <laughs> hey, Bomber but, rang me the, the following day. The airbag. Uh, <laughs> Owen rang me the following day to know where was Billy. I said he's in, in the hospital. Uh, he said, "I want to ring him about the accident." So I rang Billy first, and I said. Uh, Bomber's ringing you there about the accident. Accident, he says. What accident? <laughs> there was no accident. <laughs> so, uh, uh, we, we, the we Lansons out, made we, it up anyway. Yeah, we made it up anyway, right. Jeez, I, I didn't know that was your style, Bomber. Is that right? I'm learning something here. Once a fella, once a fella ran into me, but you're like, so, as I said, I was the airbag, you know? <laughs> you couldn't get hurt. But uh, that time, whatever happened, whatever way I timed it, I was looking back that way trying to catch a ball like that. You would want to be in television to really spot what I'm doing there now, but it was a genuine, <laughs> genuine accident. Yeah. Genuine accident. And, um, geez, I thought, I remember looking down at him and saw the two eyes looking up into, looking back into the back of his head, and I, I thought I'd done serious damage to him, you know? I got a fright. Um, nice. But th thank God he's, he's fine since. Okay. And uh, Con, Con mentioned uh, Miko there saying, get the ball into Bomber. What was he like pre-match? Was he emotional? Would he use carrot with some fellas and stick with other fellas? Was it the same with everyone? Was he distant? Was he close to the players? Miko? Yeah. Miko, he was, he was, he'd get fairly emotional in the dressing room. I remember one time there he was giving a speech and we were all around the table and his false teeth fell out during the, 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 the talk. <laughs> He was roaring, you know, and hitting the, with the Lucas head bottle. And he just put his hand over them and continued. And I was just about to burst out laughing and looked around. But no, there was no no reaction from anyone else. So I just moved on. I don't think any of them even saw it, you know. But um, he was, he'd get fairly emotional. But definitely, it was, he was a great man manager. He was a hand around some people. Just a coolness with your other days. If you weren't performing... You'd know it. He would. He'd be. You'd know he was sulking with you, like kind of, you know. Nice. And um, the the communication wouldn't be there. The smile wouldn't be there. He'd a, he'd a way of getting the message to you. You know, you're not doing the job. And um, but he had great man manager skills. Like all the players were mad about him. Really enjoyed massive respect for him. And he was sure that he he kept us together for so many years there and looked after us so well with trips. Sure will. Will forever be indebted to him. Did you get slagged for being his um, pet bomber? <laughs> well, like we used to like. pick the team together himself and myself, you know. <laughs> 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 I nearly got rid of the doctor, I told you. There. <laughs> if I had another year with him, I'd have got rid of Khan as well there at that stage. <laughs> but, uh, 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 I'm sure I get slagged, of course. Like, but you yeah. see, I, I was down in Waterville, so he was my my 
trainer down there, he would be going up to train and maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays. But he'd have me Mondays and Wednesdays. Don't keep fit below. And, you know, so it was, I couldn't escape from him. So <laughs> I, did, I did a deal with him anyway that you, you can't kill me every night. Take, cut back. I'd rather a little bit every night rather than being killed two nights. So he, he spread the load. That's the way I think he would put it. So we came to an understanding that way, and he he sometimes forgot it. Uh. What was his What was his talk around? Um, he obviously had the most lethal inside forward line, you know. And I know the football was a bit simpler back there, tactically wise. But was there anything that you were expecting, or when he was his tactical speech or his tactical talk around getting it? Was it as basic as get it in? Or no, was there was there no, science that if we go down a line to try and get it across? Or was I always fascinated because it was catch and kick. We know that looking back in it, but there was a lot of style with some of the kicking, kick passing in and in there too. But sure, I was looking over the COVID nineteen there. I was looking at some of the matches. Sure, Jeannie Mac, the the the, the ball. If we had fellas kicking in good balls, just, I'd have had about <laughs> 10, 10 or twelve all stars here. <laughs> you just see the quality of the balls coming in yeah. there. But, um, Indeed, I noticed, I noticed you were one-on-one -on -one as well, though. <laughs> <laughs> but what he used Care. to do, he was just get us to spread out. Okay. And he knew he knew the importance of space. He'd keep giving out every night. He'd blow the whistle, look, look where you are, all in together. Get out, move out and keep moving. It was, you know, which made an awful lot of sense, really, like, because, you know, it, was, it became more one-on-one -on -one then, like. Yes, Karen. When, when, do you remember the time he'd uh, 100 shares in our Aston Stacks? When yes. I was leading Trilly in 76, Mikey very kindly gave me the number 14 long sleeve jersey he wore in the All Ireland final in 75, which I thought was lovely, lovely touch. Yes. He said, Thank God you're going. He says, I haven't kicked the ball since you came down there. <laughs> 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 we, were out, we were out there and I. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, Les, yeah, no, but the, it, like uh, Mikey, when when Bomber was when when he was saying keep space was, was a kind of was a part of it to get it into you and have Egan and Sheehan coming off you or Egan and Mikey coming off you at angles yeah. or Pat coming in off the or Augie coming in off you at the forty. Were you really? Was it a no, focal no. point? Because I know when I was in there in 06 and 07 with Kerry when I started the kind of whole full forward thing. You yeah. know, I was Jack was very conscious about getting it into me and getting the boys in around me coming off me, you know. And obviously, if the yeah. simple ball was on to Gooch, you obviously gave it to him 100 times out of 100. But his focus was to try and get it in. And I always felt when there was a clear focus to get it in, it was a bit easier to play. Everybody knew what was going on rather than people playing off the cuff. I don't think Miko, I can't ever remember Miko saying kick it into Bummer, like, you know. Being honest, he, he, his, his philosophy was fast, quick, fast, snappy football, ball into space, plenty movement at pace, give the ball to the man in the best position. Um, if we could create space, then often a corner forward would come out. We had a tactic that to play the ball into that corner and I'd just make sure that I was standing at that side of the man. It was, Okay. It was simple enough stuff, really. Like, but it was still very relevant. Like that, he didn't want fellas looking at the O'Neills on the ball. When a fella got a ball, move it fast to the man in the best position. Give it up to the to the fellas that can score. And he didn't like halfbacks going forward. Um, in for many many years, even though in the seventies and seventy five, six, seven, there was a lot of half attacking halfbacks. But I think after losing in seventy six and seventy seven. He kind of wanted more or less the forwards to be left alone above and the tail figure it out and just plenty of movement and give the ball to the man in the best position. Yeah, I suppose you did a few decent fellas up there in fairness, Chi. I had. <laughs> <laughs> Con, could I could I ask you, Con, and we'll get Bomber's yeah. thoughts on this as well. So if we're doing a Cork uh, Kerry memory lane trip here. So 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, Kerry beat Cork in Munster. 1983, you managed to beat them. But then again, 84, 85, 86, 87, uh, or eight, not 87, in fact, just up to 86, it's Kerry again. So of those nine years, eight times Kerry beat Cork, just, you must have been sick of them. It was incredibly painful. You have no idea. But I always remember 1990 was the best day we had. We hammered them down the park 
And I can remember where I was standing with Larry Tompkins after the game, having a few points. And we said, fuck them, no, we haven't. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> they'll, down, they'll be down for a few years. <laughs> Jeez, that was great. We, no, we, we had a good team. Down to Killarney the following year, beaten again. That was that was a killer for me. I thought, I thought we were about to go on a roll, but no, it's a tough going. And it, it um, must have been so tough for you to train so hard all winter into you know into the summertime, and then boom, you're against this brilliant team, season over again, and to pick yourselves up again year after year. Yeah, you see, no back door. Then we we we, we could have done it way better if there was a back door. But every year, Mick would come into us. This is true, and tell us we were the second best team in Ireland. <laughs> there are no prizes for that, you know. Um, but but can can I can I just make a comment about uh, about the, the present situation with the COVID and that? Sure. I think it might show players and all of us that the game got too serious, which it has, in my opinion. It was way more fun that time. Uh, we didn't train. Uh, we trained hard, but not as hard. Uh, and I think things might steady up a bit after this. Right. You think, might, it's, you think it's out of whack, Con? I do. I mean, you don't need to look at the vote on whether we should play or not to see what senior players thought. 52% of the fellas didn't want to play. Mm. And they're obviously from the counties that see themselves having no chance. We're in danger of becoming elitist if we're not careful. And when about did the change really happen for you, Con? When did we cross that line of it maybe not being worth it for too many? I suppose in the last 10 years, really. Right. Uh, I mean, you, you have to take your hat off to the dubs now. They're fantastic. And I'm not pointing the finger at Dublin, but it, 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 it is not encouraging for the weaker counties uh, to, to, to kill themselves for the winter, to be hammered in the summer, you know. Bomber, you so, were coming in there? I'm saying the, the Kerry lads would sacrifice anything to play. And there's a loads of counties where you have a reasonable chance of winning. Donegal, Tyrone, Dublin, you know, Mayo, Galway, they are putting in huge effort and, and they love it and, and, and that. But I think what I, what I would agree with you, Con, this year is that they got a chance to play with their club more. And that they really, yeah. really enjoyed that, and they became part of the club because you can often have a be a county player, and you you just don't get a, many chances to go out with your with. And there's a kind of a dimness can often happen. No, I was lucky in Ogie. We were lucky it didn't happen to us because in our time you were allowed to play loads of matches with your club. You could play. I played a match the night before. I had to play my first championship match in '78. Wow. I had to play with my club the night before. Um, over in Ganegilla. So I'm only just saying we got loads of chance to play with our club. But in the last 20 years, you had county players were just strictly nearly playing with the county 90% of the time, 95% of the time. And yeah. that's, they missed out and they missed out on an awful lot there because the fellas they grew up with, um, they were kind of, they didn't really know them the way they should know them. And I think that was the beauty of, of this, where you had a half a season you play with your club and you die with your club and then you're in good enough shape, you come in then and you play with your county and die with your county. Yeah, that's, I, I my, agree. that's my I, stake, I, no. No, 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 <laughs> Bomber, you're, 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 you're 100%. I agree with you because um, I've done both and I played with the club this year and I probably had one of the most enjoyable years, uh, you know, with the lads. You know, we ended up winning the club final, but the county final, we got beaten by the crow but still the enjoyment of just getting a bit of a run, getting loads of trainings, as you exactly say, that just familiarity to get to know fellas. What happens county players now is they come out after their, their, their county season is over. They may have two training sessions. The county is going to bang on the county championship straight away. And you, however long you're in it or however long it takes, it might be a month, it might be five weeks, it's over. And then you want to get away from football because you've been at it for... 11 months, you want a break, you want to get away. So you, you want nothing to do with it. But I think the, the biggest thing on the GEA calendar next year, uh, and and this will this will relate back to off the ball. It'll relate back to all the outlets. The Talton Cup next year, if that's not handled correctly, if we don't give this competition the respect it deserves, if we don't big it up, if we don't cover it, if we don't put the final on the same day the All Ireland final is on, or give it the day before and try and 
try and um because you see in these division three and division four games you see the quality of games the excitement levels we're getting are serious so i think if they mind this um and and they really do put a job of promoting it show showing live games making sure these players know that if i put my effort in as as dr con rightly said if i put my effort in all through the winter um at least i'm going out and i'm going to be competitive um, and it gives you focus on both sides. It gives you focus on your championship experience, and it gives you focus on what you do in the league because obviously your league determines whether you're in the, the Sam Maguire or the Talton Cup. So I think it, it it creates extra competition in both the league, and then when you get into your championship, yes, you mightn't be able to go for Sam this year, but you might have a young team coming through, and you start talking to that team, and you start building them up, and you start saying, we're in the Talton Cup this year now and we're going to give it a right good rattle. That's a great focus for a team. They get a few wins. They spend longer in the championship. The management get to know them a bit better. They get a bit of confidence. As Dr. Khan says, they might enjoy it a bit. They get they get the experience of of winning a few games rather than training all year, playing league games and then going out in the championship. And as you say, getting hammered by a big name and almost embarrassed by a big name and crawling off the pitch and kind of going, no, I'm not coming back to do that next year. So I think it's a crucial juncture for the GA that we get this Telting Cup right and that it's not treated like uh, what was the old one bomber they brought out um, what was that B championship they brought out there Tommy Murphy, 10 or 15 years ago what was it Tommy uh, Murphy, I never was played B Kim <laughs> bomber you killed me bomber <laughs> <laughs> I tell you bomber in 93 you should have been playing B <laughs> <laughs> because bomber I saw see, the size see. of your I saw, see. I saw the size of your jersey the 93 <laughs> jersey someone asked me to sign it before the 2014 all Ireland final you know you knew your I fans there. Yeah, that was a, that was a special this... one that was made up that was a special <laughs> one that was made up Stop. as a joke <laughs> did this fella put this jersey over the railing and I said, I put the note I said, what is this? He goes, that's the Bombers jersey from 93. It's like a duel. It's like a duel. Yeah, no, you're after the spot. I have feelings. I have feelings, point, too, I have feelings too, Kim. I have feelings too, Kim. Bomber, I know. I was there with you, but I don't worry about it. And Con, can I ask you, is the, is the modern player and you don't have to break confidence, do you suspect the modern player is, is looking at the situation at the moment? I don't mean the COVID one, I just mean generally, say, over the last decade, looking at the thing and saying, Jesus, this is out of control. Or do they, do they not want to be training lots? Do they not want to make the most of their abilities while they have a short window to do it? I think they find it's a bit much. Right. That would be my honest opinion. Uh, but I, I see today Crow Park have uh, changes in foot now. And uh, shorter season next year or the year after next. And mm. uh, so the, the club will get uh, more, more priority, which I think is a good thing. Right, OK. And uh, I must tell a story of Polly Shea when he started his coaching career. I brought him up to UCC in 1991. Uh, I, said, I rang him up and I said, your CV for coaching is blank. We have a machine up here come up. We win the series and you're on your way. So he came up for two years. We didn't win a round of it. But the last time he was with the team, he played St. Mary's above in Belfast and Peter Kenneman destroyed us. And we were coming round the bus, the two of us with the team. And I said to Polly, this is your last time with this gang now. I said, they've broken their ass for you. Stand up and thank them and wish them well in their futures. and." that careers go well and you know, we leave it at that. So the two of us were getting out in Dublin, throw his bag, turned to me and he says, feck him, he says, they left me down. <laughs> that was it, gone. <laughs> no, no speech. No mercy. Um, uh, I've, I've a last question for each of you before we, we, we wrap up. Con, can I ask you, because I did want to ask you, so since yeah. 1976, and we'll, we'll just keep it to Cork, it's already an impossible question, but so in yeah. the hurling and the football, you have seen some geniuses at work. Could you give me a, a favourite player of yours in each code? Gary Tompkins in football, Brian Corcoran in hurling. All right. No, <laughs> no doubts. Why is that? What yeah. do they have? You weren't ready for that, Joe. No, I, I, thought, I well, thought you'd at least pretend it was a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Larry Hampton was the best player I saw play with Cork. Uh, the best player, the best Cork, best player from Cork was Stephen O'Brien. So, the subtle difference yeah. there. Um, hurling wise, Brian Cochran, he 
won the 99 All Ireland for us from centre back. He was our star player. And he came back a few years later and he won two All Irelands. Without them, we wouldn't have won them, I think. So he'd be my favourite hurler. Okay. And Bomber, before you go, who's going to stop Dublin this year? Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, if anyone is going to stop them to be Kerry, um, I think Kerry are. I see a lot of improvements in the in the last few matches if we can read much into into them, but uh, they seem to be tightened up a bit in defence, which was the the big problem. I do think we have a team that will score enough, and there's a lot of hunger there, a lot of fitness, a lot of maturity and experience there now, and um, but it'll take a huge effort to beat that Dublin team, even after losing the lads, you know, and the new manager and everything. A new manager can often just be what a team, you know, when the, when just what they need on, on the road to get another, squeeze another few years out of them. But I I think Kerry have a, a right chance this year. Okay, very good. Kieran. any last question you, you want to get into the two lads before we wrap up? Um, I, I, is that an ab cruncher machine behind your head, Bomber, there on the ground? Is it? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that an ab machine behind you? What's that black machine behind you? Is that an ab cruncher, an old-fashioned ab cruncher? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That, that, that's where I... You know, under that, I keep all the Mars bars. <laughs> that's, that's a special little case. They're locked away there, you know? No, I was just... It was, it was in my eye line for the whole interview, Joe, and I was just wait, I was just picturing Bomber getting down to do a set of two sets of 50 on the ab cruncher there. <laughs> I, I'm glad you've noticed anyway, Kieran, you know, the change in shape. I know the change of shape in you. Yeah. During COVID, Joe, myself and Bomber don't live far from each other. Oh, yeah. And uh, during, during the, the first lockdown... Um, we'd be there was a little cockle shell road down uh, about two kilometres from our door, and it was uh, it's a little uh, inlet into Tralee Bay. And Bomber was walking from one side of it, and I used to walk from the other side of it or drive down with the kids. And uh, yeah, he put in a serious off season. Oh, Joe, I tell you, I, there'd be definitely four or five minutes in them below in Parky Creek on oh, Sunday yes. if we badly needed it. <laughs> yeah, once, once, once an athlete, always an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd get the chance of saying that ever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> come, here, come, come here actually I was reading Bomber before we go I know you love your golf Jesus your dad spent the best £300 I've ever heard spent that's right yeah he bought 1970 1970 yeah I was 12 or 13 um, he bought me life membership in Belly Bunyan Jesus. golf club yeah for £300 Bomber you must have seen some big American names flying in they like Belly Bunyan don't they they do, and they love Tralee as well. Do you know the the boat courses? They're two fantastic courses. We we can't go there at the moment, but we'll get back there again. But they're, they've been improving Tralee even now. Um, that they've made some fantastic improvements to a very good course, two superb courses. We're very lucky to have them on our doorstep. You know, and to, delighted to be a member of board of them. I'd say, you are. Jeez, that's that money well spent. Three hundred pounds for life membership there. Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, and after that plug for Tralee, now I'll probably have life membership in Tralee as well, you see. <laughs> right, well, listen, on that note, Bomber Liston, thanks very much. Great to talk Thank to you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Dr. Khan, you're, you're involved still. You're there on Sunday, aren't you? I am, yeah. I am. Good man. Well, listen, Hopefully. enjoy yeah. that and go well. And She's amazing. 1976, still at it. So, listen, great to talk to you both. Bomber thanks, Liston, well. Dr. Khan, thanks very Pleasure. much. Uh, we are Pleasure. in the midst of our uh, Super Value Roadshow and it's the latest in our series of roadshows. In association with Super Value, we're calling on GA fans across the country to support where you're from. You can check out our social channels. You can get involved and win some great prizes there and you can check out facebook.com forward slash Super Value Ireland for more information. So that was Owen Bomber-Liston and Dr. Con Murphy. Stay with uh, myself and Kieran Donaghy. More great guests to come. <laughs>